Hey there, Michael here again for another Python short where we learn something amazing in a couple of minutes about Python. In this one, we're going to talk about comprehensions. We've talked about list comprehensions and you may have heard of it. That's the most common way to create one liners that generate lists with interesting transforms and filters. But did you know you can do that for other data structures like dictionaries and sets? You will in the next couple of minutes. Here we are in PyCharm, let's jump in. So we've got a new bit of code. You may have seen the loops to comprehension short. If you haven't, I'll put a link to that video up there. In this one, what we did is we loaded up a list of data and here we have a list of this class. And this class has things like an ID, names, emails, and it's modeling buying cars or customers of a car company. The make, the model, the year, the VIN, and so on. And we've got this mock data where it's coming from. For example, Dell Cashmore with that email address. Let's copy that. We're going to use it in a second. Bought this car with this VIN number for that price. So all of that is already in place. We're already loading that data up here. We have about a thousand entries in that file, exactly a thousand. What we want to do is we want to take and create other data structures from this list of those customers. You can see the type right there. What we want is a dictionary. We'd like to be able to say, given an email, instantly find, near instantly find, the associated customer with that email. Given a VIN number with near instant response time, give us and that customer that bought that car with that VIN number. And finally, we want to take and find all the unique VIN numbers. We've had customers who have bought a car and they sold it back and we sold it to another customer. So in that list of a thousand sales, we don't have a thousand unique cars. We have something like 990 or something along those lines. So let's go ahead and do that. And then once we build up these data sets, we ask simple questions like given an email we type in, use the dictionary to do a super fast query there and there. And then we're just going to print out the unique VIN numbers. Remember sets store items without duplication. So what we're going to do is put just the VIN numbers in there. And if there's duplicates, it'll compress it down. All right, so here's how it works. We've seen for list comprehensions that we had something like this. We had final item for item in data. Let's do it like this, data if test. And that was a list comprehension right there, okay? What we want is a dictionary. Now it's very similar for the dictionary. We do curly braces instead, and it's like this, except for we have key colon final item. Right, and it's this curly braces here and this divider of the colon. So let's go and use that. Now, here's a tip. If I go over and say, I want the key, and we're going to have the sale, so we may call it S. If we say S dot, you get no help. But watch this. If we write the last part first for S in sales and then go back, S dot, oh yeah, there's that help we're looking for, email. And what do we want in there? We want the key for each entry is going to be an email and then the thing we want back is the actual sale. Let's do the same thing for the VIN number. It's incredibly similar, but instead of using the key as the email, we're going to say VIN. And let's go ahead and run it just for those first two. And notice it's going to say, do a search by email. And let's go back into our mock data and we'll pull up. Let's go down in the middle somewhere. That's good. Check out this person right here. So we enter their email address. Look at that. It comes back. Volkswagen, new Beetle, such and such for that with that VIN number for that price. How awesome is that? And we also can search by VIN number. So we should get a Silverado 2500 back with that VIN number. And we do. So cool. Now, the last thing is it's going to show us how many items are these unique VIN numbers. So let's go do that. We built up with this syntax as our dictionary comprehension. Now, the sets are suspiciously similar, except for instead of going key colon value, they just have the item or final item, I guess I'm calling it like this. So we're going to do almost the same thing here for the VIN like this. And instead of having the key structure, the key value, we just have the keys. All right, one more time. Let's go search by email. Perfect. That person bought the Silverado. We could also search by VIN number and then we hit enter 
And there we have all the VIN numbers. If I were to wrap that around, if we do the word wrap, you'll see there's a bunch of them. But we only have 994 neat cars out of those thousand sales. Pretty awesome. So here's how we can go beyond list comprehensions, which is this one, with dictionary and set comprehensions. Again, we're doing an incredible amount of cool work in just three lines of code here. You can see we built this nice mini in-memory database-like thing. Super, super cool. You think this is interesting? Do you find it useful? Use it in your own code? Tell us how down in the comments and while you're there, please like the video. It really helps support our work. Now you know, there are more comprehensions than just the list comprehension. We have the dictionary comprehension and the set comprehension. And on top of this, we also have generators that will extend the way we build the list. So many cool ways to take these little expressions and build up amazing Python data structures by using them. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to get more, click on my face up there and subscribe to the channel. You also check out Talk Python to Me, the podcast where we talk about these ideas a lot. And we have hundreds of hours of Python courses over at Talk Python Training. So there's two more resources if you want to go deeper. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. See you next time.